my story is a little bit different. So I am the parent here. I did not come as a child. I came as the adult, and I'm raising kids here. So I'm like, I think a lot of people that can relate to my story. So, but my story is, uh, it's not only my journey here to the US. It's, you can say, 70 years. Uh, I'm a fourth generation refugee. My parents, they were born refugees. My grandparents, they're refugees, and my great grandparents. So, and it's, it's really hard to like, think about the refugee issues because people, when they think of it, they think that you, there is a war, there is any, any struggle in a country or in a community that drives people out, it forces them out of their homes, and then they live in refugee camps, they come back to their homes, or they resettle somewhere else. For the Palestinian, it's a different story. It's a story of identity. It's the whole idea of being forced out of your home and your home being replaced and you cannot come back. So Palestinians have been in refugee camps for 70 years. And these refugee camps, they're uh, in the West Bank and Gaza, in, in neighboring uh, countries, Jordan and Lebanon. Uh, and this is like 15% of the Palestinian refugees who live in the refugee camps. A lot of Palestinian refugees, they settle in other places, but they still have the refugee number, like me, my husband, my family. So a home for me, it was always a struggle, something like I'm, I'm trying to get where it's home. It's, it's been hard because my family, they moved from one place to another. So my grandparents, they forced out of their homes in 1948. Uh, my mom's side, they went to Egypt. My dad's side, they moved to some place like in the West Bank in, uh, in a small town called Hebron. My mom, she was born in Egypt. My dad was born in Hebron, and then he dis got displaced again when he was 17, 17 years old. It was 1967 again. <laughs> so I was born in Libya. We lived in Libya. We lived in Jordan. We lived in Egypt. So for me, the memory of home when I was a child, it was like something really hard to remember. Like, I don't know. Where is home? I don't know. Like, I don't remember. I have a picture of me and a really nice beach in Benghazi. And I always keep looking at this picture because I'm a little child with my mom, but I have no memory of that picture. And my parents, they talk about it. And this picture, it, my parents, when they lived there in Libya, they uh, sent it to one of their relatives and then the picture came back. So another part of, of our story, or like keeping that memory, that whenever we try to come back, you cannot come back and uh, bring anything with you. So when we moved, when my family lived in Libya and they moved from there to Jordan, you, the only thing you can carry as a Palestinian is just your suitcases, your clothes, anything that is really valuable for you that you're going to use. You're not allowed to carry. You don't have memories of a furniture that passed from a grandfather to a, a, a son. You don't have a picture of that because everything, it was gone, everything was gone, everything was left behind. So for me, all was like, trying to get to thinking of that memory, that where, where did I play, where is home, where I, like just the idea of telling my kids where, where was, was I born, where my parents, they were born. It's, it's hard to find that physical place. Mm -hmm. So when I was a child, the first time that I felt that this whole idea of like I'm missing home and what, I don't know what is it exactly. My parents, we were coming to Palestine, <coughs> the Palestinian side, the West Bank, were visiting our uh, family there. So that was the summer, I was um, five years old, and my parents, I don't know why, they decided to do that. They decided to leave me there for a year to learn more about the culture, to get to spend time with my grandparents. I was the oldest grandchild from both sides of the family, so I, like, they thought that I'm gonna be spoiled, which is, I was to a certain level, but I, um, I don't know, like, I keep, I keep like nagging on my parents, calling them, like, how did you leave me for a whole year? And you went back. But that year did change my life. It's like, I, for, a, for a child, because that's the time that I start building that memory of what home is for me. So I, I stayed with my grandparents. My aunt, she, she was a teacher in a refugee camp in, uh, in Palestine. 
and we I used to go with her every day. So I spent the whole year going to school in the refugee camp and uh, going around and uh, getting to know the people there. And still, I'm not getting the idea of like why everybody's living in these tents and why everybody's living in these like small boxes. It's not. It's not get, getting to my. I'm, I cannot comprehend that as a child. Um, so that's that summer, my grandfather on my mom's side, he he came and said, like, Rania, I'm going to take you. We're going to go to a trip. We're going to go to Jerusalem. We're going to go to the Aqsa uh, uh, Mosque, and we're going to go and pray, and you're going to see the old city. I was so excited about this whole thing. And at that time, we were still allowed to go to Jerusalem before uh, that was, like, in the early 80s. So as Palestinians, we, we can cross a, a highway. That highway divided at that time. Palestine and Israel in 1948-1967 was West Jerusalem and East Jerusalem. And this road, as a Palestinian, you drive on that road, you get to East Jerusalem, but you cannot stop. There are areas that Israelis, they live on both sides, and you cannot uh, get out of the car. So while we're driving um, in Grandpa's uh, car, we call it like, so Grandpa is a Sido in, in, in Arabic. So I'm driving in Sido's car, and we're getting, we're entering Jerusalem. And he said, oh, Rania, by the way, I'm going to show you our house. So I'm looking like, your house? You live in, like, what? You have a house in Jerusalem? He's like, no, no, that's our house, but we don't live there anymore. And this house was taken from us. So we're driving, and he said, uh, when we get closer, I want you, I'm going to tell you, Rania, stop counting. You count from 20 backward, and when you get to one, you're going to see the house, because you cannot stop. And we are just going to have a glimpse of the house, and we're going to keep going. So I'm sitting down in the car. I'm anxious. And he said, Rania, start counting. I started, and when I get to one, he said, look to your right, and this is the house with the green balcony. It's on the second floor. So I looked, and I, like, I barely got a small glimpse. It's just, and he, he started talking. He said, like, that was my house. We, like, we left this house when I was 14. And he started telling me about their story and why. He, like how did they, were they kicked out of the house and what happened and how they took, like Rita said, the key of the house. For them, it was just, okay, there is the war is happening, we're coming out, like a couple of days and we're coming back. So they took nothing. They left the house with everything, they locked like, the key and they left. And they couldn't come back. So like for Allah, that's something, it's really hard as a, as a Palestinian that you know that you have the key and you want to come back. And for my great grandfather with his little kids they like they stayed out in a in a place with with friends for a, a week and they want to come back and they were not allowed but in my grandfather's memory this is their house and he passed it on to his kids and then to me and when he came and said this is our house we like for me it's the idea that it starts like i start realizing of he lost that's the physical place this is his home i can see it and from that day like i I went back to Jordan, then I came back when I was a teenager back to, to Palestine, lived my teenage life there, went to college, and still like any time that I get a chance to go to Jerusalem, any time I want to cross the road, for me the whole idea of crossing the road just looking at that, it's 30 seconds that you look, you take a glimpse of that house, that it's grandpa, grandpa's house. And it's, it's just the memory of the place the only thing I know about it that every time I pass, I try to put in my memory the window, the door, the balcony, something that it's um, it's just it's there and I know I cannot see. Um, and my grandpa kept the key and passed away, and he couldn't come back to his house. Um, and for me, like. First time I, I I came here as an adult to the US, first time I took my kids, I was like tried really hard to get a permit. We're not allowed to cross that street anymore. So for me it's just the idea that I want the kids to cross the street and see grandpa's house. And it's not it's not the point of going back and getting the house. It's not that there are people that are building memories there. It's just the idea of returning to your place, like being acknowledged that you existed in that area mm -hmm. and you have the right to return. And even if you go and live, nobody's going to come and kick somebody else's out. It's just the point of like be, having that right. And that's, that's what makes it really hard as a Palestinian, 
like different than a lot of uh, struggles. It, it's not harder. It's more like it's a different thing. It's a unique thing because it's it's the um, somebody else's um, way of erasing your identity. That's that's the big struggle. So for me, home it become my identity. So I I know I lived in all these countries. I know I lived here even in the US. I've been here for, for a while. I'm raising my kids. But as a Palestinian home, for me, it's that place, grandpa's house, that I couldn't come to, that I know that it's still there. And I'm looking for that time that I'm going to stop by and like say hi and say, this is my grandpa's house. Maybe I'm not going to. I'm not. I'm not gonna live there, and I'm, I'm. But like for the people to know that, yeah, that I I live there. I exist. I am there. I have I have a history there, and um, just I don't know. That's that's home for me. That it's it's really hard to get, to make it enough. Uh, it, it's hard to take the physical place out of it because yeah, we need we want to return to that place, but it's hard to to think of it more than like your identity because it's been 70 years for that. And I, for me, home become the memories that I built from my grandparents the, and I'm passing on to my kids. And like, it's the funny story that like right now, we are maybe 100 grandkids with our kids. And so we're not like one person wanna go and get that house. <laughs> but in my, my, my girl's mind, like my daughter, she's like, <laughs> she's thinking like she's a, she's a, she's smart. She's thinking about it from uh, as an American kid. She's like, mom, the the value of the land right there, it's really good. <laughs> I'm like, yes. She's like, do you think we can get like part of Ciro's house? And I'm saying like, Zena, you're you're like one of maybe 150 people that they're like they're looking at the house. She's like, no, 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 no. Let's think about it. Your your Cido, he's the oldest of his kids. Your mom, she's the oldest of her kids. You're the oldest, I'm the oldest. So we're the only people that we can think of. <laughs> 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 Somebody else. <laughs> but I was, I was so happy just that moment for her to think of that place and just use this idea. Like she, she came up just thinking of, oh, mom, can we get, can we go and have Cito's house? So like just passing this memory to her and thinking of her passing her memory. Hopefully, it won't be just a memory. It will be like a physical. Solution for that, and they like we know that we can we can go there. Uh, that's that's home for me. Oh. Another thing. Oh. That's, that's my story. But on another like uh, uh, hand of talk, talking about like story of us moving here to the, uh, the U.S. So I I did. Come like I said before, as a parent and a man immigrant too, and I went through. It was hard for me as well to be an adult and come here and try to find your place. Besides of like all of the package that I brought with me and all of my stories, just the idea to come here and uh, start a new life and learning about a new culture and meeting new people and with all the stigma and the stereotyping and like everything that that Rita mentioned about being uh, uh, a Palestinian, an Arab American, a Muslim, like all of it. it. It was not an easy thing. So I went through a lot. My family went through a lot. It was not always an easy ride to go and buy something, or like it, it was not an easy thing to get out and talk to people. Uh, and that made me think of everybody who comes here as well. So thinking of funny or ugly or bad or embarrassing stories happen to you when you go and travel somewhere and you don't know the culture or things that it's really hard that people that they live here all their lives they take for granted and when you come as a, a newcomer wh whether you're an immigrant whether you're a refugee it's really hard it's a different culture and people they think don't think about it as it's different they look down for somebody who doesn't know the obvious because it's an obvious for me i've been doing this all my life nobody thinks that other people coming from other places, they have their, way of, aware, their own way of living. And if we go and live there, it's going to be hard, and they're going to laugh at us. So it's, it's either way, it's, it's always that, um, that idea that a new person who comes here, learning uh, the culture, it's not, it's not an easy thing, and we should understand that. So that was part of it. And then 
volunteering with Rita, getting to know the Syrian refugees and getting to know like the refugees that they come here, learning their stories. So I decided to just design a manual for them, a neighborhood manual, something that gets all of their stories, all of my stories, put it in a graphic book and put it, this one, it's in English and Arabic, but it does show little things that we do take for granted, that we don't think about, or for us as people who come here new, we don't even think that we need to ask for this question, like some things that I don't know that exist, so I can ask about it. So both ways, and um, I call it this is home because I want them to feel home. Like I, I wanted the families to feel home easily mm -hmm. without that struggles. I want to try to like give something somehow to ease that transition and make it like, uh, so So far the families that have been using that, I, I, I keep hearing these stories, which is amazing for me that I know that people, they carry it around and they flip the page and they look at things that it's, it, yeah, it makes me happy whenever I feel like each one of them finds something useful in it, so, so that's the book. Mm -hmm.